Howdy! Hey, hey, hey! We are now on Chapter 4, Graph Transformations. This is split across 10 lessons, and it's mainly focusing on graph transformations, but there are a couple of other lessons thrown in as well. To start with, before we move on to any of the transformations, I thought I would look at the shapes of different graphs. Obviously, in previous years, you have dealt with lots of different graphs. So if I gave you a function y equals sine x or cos x or tan x, you should know what they look like. So the sine graph looks something like that. And your cos graph looks like that. Lots of people do get, tend to get mixed up between them. I always remember the cos graph kind of looks like a C on its side. Sine graph looks like an S. Other people might want to think the sine graph starts in the sand. Cos graph starts in the clouds. Try to find some way of remembering it so you don't get them mixed up. Tan graph is the one that looks totally different. That is what your tan graph looks like. I'm sure you all know that. Other ones that we have dealt with in higher so far are exponentials and inverse of an exponential, a logarithmic function. That is what they look like. Obviously, though, going back a few years, you dealt with other graphs. I mean, you were plotting straight lines way back in primary three. And you know that your straight line would just be your linear function, and it's in the form of y equals mx plus c. What you can say then is that the degree is going to be 1. In other words, the largest power of x is just 1. That's x to the power of 1. Say so you switched it so the degree was 2. In other words, you had an x squared term. Well, you know that's just going to be a quadratic. And what does your quadratic look like? Go on, Eva. Yeah, it's a smiley face or a sad face. Okay, that is what your quadratic looks like. If it was to the power of 3, the degree, then it means then you're going to have a, an x cubed term. And your x cubed term uh, means that it's going to be a cubic function. And that would look something like this. Notice how your cubic function is to the, uh, the degree is 3, so the graph is doing three things. It's going up, then down, then up. It's doing three things. Your linear function is degree 1, so it's just doing one thing. It's just going up. Quadratic function is degree 2, so it's doing two things. It's going down, then up. That's not always the case, but a lot of the time it is. Which means if you had degree 4, so if you had an x to the power of 4, then that is known as a quartic function. Quartic was the name of my band in secondary. Yep. I was always geeky. And that's doing four things. It's going down, then up, then down, then up. And it's looking something like a that. Some of you may be thinking, what if it was degree zero? Well, if you had degree zero, it would mean you maybe had something like y equals 2x to the power of zero. And remember, x to the power of zero is just one, meaning you would just have y equals some number. And if you've got y equals some number, you know you've just got your horizontal line looking like that. The first exercise then, it's pairing up functions and graphs. See how well you get on with that. It is on page 34, exercise 3a. Just check your answers, but you really need to be an expert at identifying graphs from functions and vice versa. Good luck. Enjoy. Bye.